as a Catholic priest, the church's desolation and the other clergy's depravity leave him confused and in pain. Then, he accepts Almighty God and welcomes the returned Lord. We gathered together and read Almighty God's words. It felt very nurturing and enjoyable. We were attending the Lamb's wedding feast. He's shocked. When the religious world's evil Antichrist forces attacks come one after another. A couple of priests burst into the church with 70 or so parishioners. Had a few people restrain me and force me to give them our books of God's words. Others went to the church courtyard armed with shovels and hoes. And I started hearing the sound of windows and doors being broken. And Bishop Zhao said, they had money, a car, and even a house ready for my arrival. Everything was taken care of. And as long as I gave up Eastern Lightning and became a priest again, I wouldn't have any worries. What kind of decision does he make, faced with all the temptation and bullying? My parents raised me in the Catholic Church. When I grew up, I finally became a priest. Later, the church grew so desolate. Bishops and priests were constantly infighting and had power struggles. And friars and nuns were always jealous and bickering. Because the diocesan bishop didn't consecrate a suffragan bishop. He got upset. He teamed up with other priests and said since the diocesan bishop spent the church's money on cars and condos and had joined the Three Self Church, he should be removed from his post. They even fought with the parishioners that supported him. Later, the jealousy and hatefulness became more serious, and there were many battles between the priests which splintered the entire church into factions. I was really disgusted to see them fighting for the sake of their status. It wasn't like a church at all, but it was just as dark as the secular world. Sounds like it. The diocesan bishop started excluding me for not joining Three Self. He assigned a priest to act as my assistant in disguise to co-opt my position. That priest came and instigated parishioners to ostracize me. And later, the church was divided into two factions. Lots of conflict began brewing. I didn't want any part of that, so I gave the bishop my resignation. I left that church, which had hate and conflict, and joined another one in the mountains. Several friars and nuns joined together. How were things there? I thought that its members were simple and unpretentious, without so many power struggles and conflicts. I thought to myself that it'd be better there. Surprisingly, I learned that things were just as bleak in that mountain church. I found the parishioners' faith tepid. They didn't follow the commandments and sinned willfully. They were dishonest and raised their voice and got into conflict. Unbelievers constantly came to lodge complaints about them with me. They were problems I couldn't resolve. I felt spiritually empty and had no words to say in my sermons. Just as I was feeling lost, miserable, and helpless, Priest Liu and Deacon Zhang bore witness to me on Almighty God's work of the last days, saying the Lord Jesus has returned. I was shocked to hear that, to say the least. I was doubtful, but dared not flatly deny it. I was thinking that the last days had come and the church was devoid of light and the Holy Spirit's work. We sinned by day and confessed by night and couldn't practice God's words. I was constantly uneasy and even kind of afraid. I felt that something terrible was happening. I was longing for the day the Lord would return to fully save us from that darkness and misery. Yeah. So when 
they gave testimony that the Lord Jesus had returned. I desperately hoped it was true, but I was afraid to believe it. You were very cautious. Yes. At the time, I was dying to know more. I wanted to know more about the return of the Lord Jesus. That's why I asked those two brothers to tell me more. They shared lots of fellowship with me, and together we read Almighty God's words, which included a passage that left a deep impression on me. Almighty God says, After the work of Jehovah, Jesus became flesh to do his work amongst men. His work was not carried out in isolation, but was built upon the work of Jehovah. It was work for a new age that God did after he had concluded the age of law. Similarly, after the work of Jesus ended, God went on with his work for the next age, because the entire management of God is always progressing forward. When the old age passes, it will be replaced by a new age, and once the old work has been completed, there will be new work to continue God's management. This incarnation is God's second incarnation, which follows upon Jesus' work. Of course, this incarnation does not occur independently. It is the third stage of work after the age of law and the age of grace. Every time God initiates a new stage of work, there must always be a new beginning, and it must always bring a new age. So too are there corresponding changes in the disposition of God, in the manner of His working, in the location of His work, and in His name. No wonder, then, that it is difficult for man to accept the work of God in the new age. But regardless of how he is opposed by man, God is always doing His work, and is always leading the whole of mankind forward. When Jesus came into the world of man, He ushered in the age of grace and ended the age of law. During the last days, God once more became flesh, and with this incarnation, He ended the age of grace and ushered in the age of kingdom. All those who are able to accept the second incarnation of God will be led into the age of kingdom and will moreover become able to personally accept the guidance of God. Though Jesus did much work among man, he only completed the redemption of all mankind and became man's sin offering. He did not rid man of all his corrupt disposition. Fully saving man from the influence of Satan not only required Jesus to become the sin offering and bear the sins of man, but it also required God to do even greater work to rid man completely of his satanically corrupted disposition. And so, now that man has been forgiven of his sins, God has returned to the flesh to lead man into the new age and begun the work of chastisement and judgment. This work has brought man into a higher realm. All those who submit under his dominion shall enjoy higher truth and receive greater blessings. They shall truly live in the light, and they shall gain the truth, the way, and the life. After reading this, they shared a lot more fellowship with me. I learned that God's work is constantly moving forward, that the Lord Jesus did the work of redemption, and faith in the Lord just gets our sins forgiven. But our sinful natures aren't resolved that way. So we live in a cycle of sinning by day and confessing by night, and we're still bound by sin. That's right. To fully save people from sin and Satan's evil forces, God needs to do another stage of work, expressing truths to judge and cleanse us. And that's how we'll be able to resolve our sinful nature and corrupt disposition, so we can escape sin, be cleansed of it, and enter into God's kingdom. The religious world lost the Holy Spirit's work long ago. To gain the Spirit's guidance and the sustenance of the truth, we have to accept all the truths God expresses in His work of the last days and keep up with His footsteps. That's the way to grow in life. Yes. I read, The Word appears in the flesh a lot after that. 
I couldn't get enough of it. My heart was drawn to God's words. Sometimes I stayed up until 2 a.m. reading it. After some time had passed, I became certain that Almighty God is the Lord Jesus returned. And I happily accepted God's work of the last days. Thank God. Thank God. So I brought the brothers and sisters who shared Almighty God's gospel into my church to fellowship so they would bring the parishioners who were true believers before God. We gathered to read Almighty God's words, fellowship together, and found new enlightenment every single day. It felt so nurturing and enjoyable. We were truly attending the Lamb's wedding feast. Basking in the Spirit's work. Right. I heard that your faith in Almighty God caused quite a stir among local Catholics. It did. Lots of bishops and priests from the region tried to stand in my way. First, it was Bishop Zhao who said, I heard you've joined Eastern Lightning. You didn't discuss something so important with me and took lots of parishioners with you. That's a betrayal of the Lord. When he returns, he's sure to reveal it to us bishops first. How could I not know if he'd really come back? Give it up and come back. I know you're in a remote area and life is hard. If you come back, we'll take care of any difficulties you have. You'll have no worries. He also said lots of things blaspheming and condemning Almighty God. Did this have an impact on you at the time? No. I was just really taken aback. He was a bishop and had said plenty of times that the Lord was returning soon, so we had to lead parishioners to pray and be watchful, to welcome the Lord. But now that the Lord had come back, he had not the slightest intentions of seeking, and was even blasphemous, and wasn't any kind of true believer. So I kept spreading the gospel, unaffected by him. Then, Bishop Wang came in with someone else and said to me, all smiles, Bishop Zhao has asked me to convince you to go see him at home. Listen, he's very concerned for your welfare and afraid you'll take the wrong path. When I heard those words, I was so annoyed. They didn't care about the parishioners and if they were going through hard times, but they were all up in arms about my faith in Almighty God. It was very clear. They tried to keep me from accepting God's work in the last days. I told him, You are all absolutely set on keeping me from my faith. The churches have been desolate without the Holy Spirit's work for years. Brothers and sisters, faith is fading away, and they're in a cycle of sinning and confessing. I've been confessing to God, but bound by sin. And I've been in a lot of pain. I learned from Almighty God's words that our faith in the Lord just brings forgiveness of sins, but not purification. If our sinful natures aren't resolved, we'll never escape the bonds of sin. God returned in the last days, expressing truths and doing judgment work to resolve the root of mankind's sinfulness so we can finally be freed from sin. Almighty God's word show me the way to being purified and fully saved. After looking into it, I have no doubts that Almighty God is really the Lord returned. My faith will never waver no matter what you say. And Bishop Wang said, while it's true that the church lacks the Holy Spirit's work and the Lord's presence, it's only temporary and it's part of the Lord's test to us. As long as we stay strong until the end, we'll see a great revival of the church. If you take everyone away into Eastern Lightning, the church will be empty. How could we have a revival? The Lord is about to return, but he hasn't returned yet. You really think he wouldn't reveal it to the Pope when he returns? Back then, the Lord Jesus gave Peter the key to the kingdom of heaven, and in turn, Peter gave it to the Pope, who ended up succeeding him. In Catholicism, the Pope is at the top, and bishops are below. All these clergy members are appointed by the Lord. So if the Lord already returned, he definitely would have told us first. Since the Pope and bishops haven't heard about the Lord's return, 
Definitely, there's no question that this news is false. If you go over to Eastern Lightning without the Pope's or Bishop's approval, isn't that apostasy? Lots of religious people have those notions. They do. Me too. I used to think like that. But I asked about that specifically when I was looking into Almighty God's work. What conclusion did you come to about his idea? I didn't agree. Bishop Wang said that the Lord would reveal his return to them first, but I knew that the Lord Jesus never said that, and that it wasn't recorded in the Bible. To welcome his return, we have to go by the Lord's own words. The Lord said, Behold, I stand at the gate and knock. If any man shall hear my voice and open to me the door, I will come in to him, and will sup with him, and he with me. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will teach you all the truth. God's words are perfectly clear. He'll speak more words and tell us the truth when he comes. And only if we hear his voice and accept God's truths can we welcome the Lord. Exactly. The Lord Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Followers like Peter and Matthew who followed the Lord Jesus, all listened to what he preached and only then realized that he was the Messiah they'd been waiting for. And the Lord decides if we're actually part of his flock based on whether we hear his voice or not. That's why the key to investigating the true way is listening for the Lord's voice and using that as the means to recognize and accept him. That's the only thing we can rely on. You're right. And in Revelation, it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. The Lord won't reveal it to any religious leaders or bishops first when he comes in the last days, but he's speaking directly to the churches, letting his voice be heard. Almighty God has expressed so many truths, unveiling so many mysteries of the Bible. This fulfills something the Lord Jesus said. When he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will teach you all the truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but what things soever he shall hear, he shall speak, and the things that are to come, he shall shew you. The Lord's words were very clear, that those who hear his voice and follow him belong to his sheep, and they are the only ones who can welcome the Lord. So I rebutted Bishop Wang, saying, You claim the Pope or bishops know first about the Lord's return, but is this based on the Lord's word? The Lord Jesus never said anything like that, and neither did God the Father or the Holy Spirit. Nothing like that is recorded in the Bible. So aren't your words nothing but a human notion? To welcome the Lord, we have to follow the Lord's own words, not our notions and imaginings. It's recorded in the Old Testament that the boy Samuel served Yahweh in Eli's presence. By human notions, Yahweh's revelation should have been given to Eli first. But Yahweh did not have it that way. Instead, he called the child Samuel a total of four times to tell him his will. And when the Lord Jesus came, instead of revealing it to the chief priests and scribes, he appeared to the shepherds and told them about the Lord Jesus' birth. Obviously, the Lord doesn't work according to man's notions. No matter how long someone's been a believer or what their status is, as long as they're willing to let go of their notions humbly seek and listen for God's voice, they can witness God's appearance. The Lord has returned expressing truths and doing judgment work. He doesn't need to solicit anyone's opinion or tell any particular person. This is God's own work that no man can interfere with. Anyone who rebels will only offend God's disposition, just like the scribes and the Pharisees. 
who clung to their own notions against the Lord Jesus and had him nailed to the cross. They committed a heinous sin and were damned and punished by God. Isn't that bitter lesson something worth reflecting on for us? What was Bishop Wang's response to your fellowship? He just replied really angrily, You have some gall daring to go against the Pope. You know, Priest Liu was kicked out of the church after joining Eastern Lightning. Church members rejected him, and even his family were against it. He gave up his priesthood and turned down a car and money. So, don't you think that's a problem? They thought giving those things up was unthinkable. That's right. What did you think at the time? That the Catholic Church really didn't have the work of the Holy Spirit, and the bishop had money, status, and pleasure on the tip of his tongue. Just like an unbeliever. How was that serving the Lord? And so, no matter how hard they tried to stand in my way, I was determined to follow Almighty God. I said, The Bible says we ought to obey God rather than obey men. I only obey God's words, not men's. You can perish that thought and stop advising me. When he saw I wouldn't listen to him, he left in a huff. After that, Bishop Zhao and Bishop Wang kept coming to try to stand in my way. They said, Priest Wei, you can't be unconscionable. Back then, to help you become a priest, Bishops and other priests risked imprisonment to protect you, paying quite a price to help you with your ten years of training to deliver sermons. We've been giving you food and drink. Your parents worked so hard for you so you could get your priesthood sooner. But you're throwing them to the wayside with Eastern Lightning. Can you still face the bishops and priests? Can you still face your parents? Give up this faith and come back to us. We're waiting for you. Did all of that uh, affect you? When they were saying those things, my mind was in complete turmoil. I thought about all the years they took care of me. The bishops really did a lot. The police had been after me for years, and the bishops arranged things really thoughtfully, all for me to ensure my safety. My family was poor, and the bishops looked after me. I was afraid I would be unconscionable if I didn't listen to them. Like you owed them. Right. But I knew that Almighty God is the Lord Jesus returned, and I couldn't turn my back on Him. So I said a prayer. O oh God, I'm feeling weak. Please give me faith and strength so I'm not swayed by outside influences. I want to follow you till the end. And then I opened, the word appears in the flesh, and saw this passage. From the moment you come crying into this world, you begin to fulfill your duty. For God's plan and for his ordination, you perform your role and start your life's journey. Whatever your background, and whatever the journey ahead of you, no one can escape the orchestrations and arrangements of the heaven, and no one is in control of their own destiny, for only he who rules over all things is capable of such work. Since the day man came into existence, God has ever worked thus, managing the universe, directing the rules of change for all things and the trajectory of their movement. Like all things, man is quietly and unknowingly nourished by the sweetness and rain and dew from God. Like all things, man unknowingly lives beneath the orchestration of God's hand. I also remembered that the Lord Jesus said, Behold the birds of the air, for they neither sow, nor do they reap, nor gather into barns, and your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not of much more value than they? God takes care of the birds flying in the air. Just think of humans. I was made by God, and he gave me my life. 
My food, my clothing is all given to me by God. The bishop's care and assistance was thanks to God's arrangements. And my chance to serve God as a priest was also determined by him. And it was his love. I should be thanking him. It was God's work. If I betrayed God to repay a person's so-called kindness, to repay their help, that would really be unconscionable of me. And those bishops and priests were jealous and power-hungry, greedy for the benefits brought about by status. The Lord has returned, and not only did they refuse to look into it, but they kept others from following God and even spread lies and blasphemy. Wasn't all that perpetrating evil? No matter how nice they seemed, they weren't trying to bring people in the presence of the Lord to help them know the Lord and gain truth and life from Him. It was to bring people before themselves, to have them adulate and follow them, which pushed people farther and farther from the Lord. It reminded me of something the Lord said to the Pharisees. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut the kingdom of heaven against men, for you yourselves do not enter in, and those that are going in you suffer not to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you devour the houses of widows, praying long prayers. For this you shall receive the greater judgment. The bishops and priests had everyone firmly under their power and stopped people from welcoming the Lord's return. They were acting like the scribes and Pharisees without any difference. Weren't they the evil servants that God's work of the last days exposes? Trying to be considerate of them would be a real betrayal of the Lord. Definitely. So their attempts to stand in your way actually opened your eyes. Yes. This was a net gain for you. Thank God. Later on, when clergy from other provinces learned about my faith in Almighty God, they started being disruptive and began besieging me. They were full of blame, attacks, and condemnation, saying my faith was a betrayal of the Lord Jesus, that I was a traitor and should be damned. The worst part was that they made things up and twisted the facts to slander the Church of Almighty God and blaspheme Almighty God. Among them, hardly anyone would just calmly hear me out. I was truly incensed. I was thinking, how could these bishops and priests be that way? Everything they said was condemnation and blasphemy and hateful toward God. For a while, it felt like something was tightly gripping my heart. I couldn't find peace. I knew that with them condemning me and rejecting me that way, well, their parishioners were certain to treat me the same way. So I thought that they would be spitting on me wherever I went. This was really painful and disappointing for me, to say the least. I remembered what the Lord said. Blessed are ye when they shall revile you and persecute you and speak all that is evil against you untruly for my sake. God became flesh and came to earth to save mankind and suffer the religious world's abuse. People are so vicious, so evil toward God. And those of us who follow God will be subject to this kind of slander too. But suffering for righteousness is blessed and meaningful. Thinking of it, I wasn't worried about other people's condemnation. They may be treating me that way, but having the chance to welcome the Lord, read God's words, and come face to face with God is the greatest blessing. God is my everything, and having Him is having all. This thought brought me a sense of peace and comfort. Back in my old church, I wasn't spiritually sustained, but was living in darkness. 
But, following Almighty God, I was getting the sustenance of the truth and could see salvation on the horizon. It was like coming back from the dead. I'd found the way of eternal life. No matter how the clergy judged me or how they condemned me, I'd follow Almighty God. After, I read this passage of Almighty God's words. In every step of work that God does within people, externally it appears to be interactions between people, as if born of human arrangements or from human interference. But behind the scenes, every step of work and everything that happens is a wager made by Satan before God and requires people to stand firm in their testimony to God. Take when Job was tried, for example. Behind the scenes, Satan was making a bet with God, and what happened to Job was the deeds of men and the interference of men. Behind every step of work that God does in you is Satan's wager with God. Behind it all is a battle. Reading this helped me see clearly. The bishops and priests' attacks toward me were part of a spiritual battle and were a great test for me. They were using money, power, and prestige to tempt me to betray God, and they lashed out at me when they didn't get what they wanted. They wanted to force me to give up my faith in Almighty God, trying to keep me from following God and accepting His salvation. They were absolutely taking on Satan's role. They were trying to defeat me with those tactics, to push me into betraying God. I couldn't fall for Satan's tricks. The more they judged me and the more they condemned me, the more I saw the truth of how they hated the truth and resisted God. Not a single one of them sought or longed for the Lord's appearance or welcomed the Lord's coming. They were all non-believers, modern-day Pharisees who work against God. Yes. I was really surprised when early one morning, just at daybreak, I was at church praying together with some friars and nuns silently. They all had just accepted Almighty God. Priests Wang and Lee showed up with some parishioners who usually weren't devout followers. They were 70 people or so, and they all burst into the church. They had these really menacing looks on their faces, and I figured they were resorting to violence to keep us from finding the true way. I was afraid, terrified, and quickly prayed to God. Dear God, my stature is small. Please give me faith and strength so I don't bow to these evil religious forces. After my prayer, I felt a sense of calmness and wasn't so afraid. I very calmly approached them and said to them, Priest Wang, Priest Li, why have you brought all these people to our church? Priest Wang said to me, You've accepted Eastern Lightning, and worse, you've gotten parishioners involved. Welcoming the Lord's return is a big deal, but you went over to Eastern Lightning. You did it in secret without discussing it with us. You're rebelling. Have you forgotten the Lord's own words? The Bible says, Then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, do not believe him. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, in so much as to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Therefore, any news of the Lord's second incarnation is false. You've been misled, and you've betrayed the Lord, and you're getting one last chance to come back. You have to give up Eastern Lightning and bring the others back, and you'll remain a priest. Uh, did you hesitate at all? No. I said very firmly, Priest Wang, you can do whatever you want to me, but keeping people from investigating the true way, from hearing God's voice, and welcoming the Lord's return is unacceptable. It's true, there are false Christs and false prophets in the last days, but the Lord Jesus said He would return. We can't fail to welcome the Lord's own return out of fear of false Christs or prophets. 
Isn't that ignorant? It is. The Lord Jesus told us to be on our guard against false Christs, because those false Christs can't express the truth, but will just mislead people with signs and wonders. Only Christ in the flesh can express the truth, bestow humanity with life, and show us the path of salvation, the path into the kingdom of heaven. Christ is God's spirit in fleshly form, and he possesses divine essence, so only he can express the truth to sustain and shepherd humans. Only he can express God's disposition and complete the work to redeem and save man. No human can do that, and no human can imitate that. Almighty God is working in the last days, unveiling the mysteries of God's 6,000-year management plan and the incarnations. In addition, He is expressing all truths that purify and fully save mankind. Only God Himself could do all this work. Who else, aside from God, could express the truth? Who else could do the work of judgment in the last days? Who else could purify and fully save mankind? not a single person. Almighty God expressing so many truths fully proves that He is the Lord Jesus returned, that He is Christ of the last days. Uh, how did they react to that? Priest Wang, eyes wide, replied, We do not care how right you are. You don't want to turn back, but are dead set on Eastern Lightning. The bishops have told us to come and warn you. You must hand over those Eastern Lightning books and immediately give that up. Then Priest Lee pointed at me and said, Hand over the church keys and that Eastern Lightning preacher right now. <laughs>